Hello everyone. In today's video I wanted to talk about a little bit of history of Clarksville, Tennessee. Being that it was my hometown and that I really love history, I just wanted to give a little bit of information about the background, the kind of settlement, the establishment of Clarksville, and I guess talk about the, you know, give some historical facts about this. Now, I'm not going to be going into deep detail about the history of Clarksville, and I feel like the sources that I'm going to be using, mostly Wikipedia, might be somewhat inaccurate or might not give completely, fully all the information that you guys would want. So you have to understand in this video, I just wanted to give you a brief history of Clarksville. If I would give you the full history, this video would probably be an hour long and I would have to find better sources that I've been looking into and the sites that I've gotten my information from. So again, if this video isn't going to be giving you guys that much information, I'm sorry as I'm just going to talk like I stated with what the title is called. I'm going to be giving you guys a brief history of Clarksville, Tennessee. Nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, let's begin. So the area now known as Tennessee was first settled by the Paleo Indians nearly 11,000 years ago. Uh, depending on what archaeologists and what historians you can ask, it can go back to even 20,000 years. We're not certainly uh, sure of when it was fully settled, but 11,000 years ago is, I guess, what most academics agree upon. Archaeologists have named the Archaic, Woodland, and Mississippian cultures whose chieftains uh, were the cultural predecessors of the Muskegee as the ones who inhabited the Tennessee River Valley prior to the Cherokee migration into the river's headwaters. And then the Spanish explorers first visited Tennessee and were led by Hernando de Soto in between 1539 and 1543. Sadly, as Spanish European colonists began to spread into the area, the native population were forcibly displaced to the south and west, including the uh, mentioned Muskegee and the other Yuchi peoples, the Chickasaw people, and the Choctaw peoples. The area around Clarksville was first surveyed by Thomas Hutchins in 1768. In the years between 1771 and 1775, John Montgomery, the namesake of the county, visited the area while on a sort of hunting expedition. James Robertson in 1771 led a group of families who were part of the regulator movement out of North Carolina into Tennessee. These pioneers who had settled in northeast Tennessee met at Sycamore Shoals to establish an independent regional government known as the Watauga Association. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. There was a problem though as this territory was part of the Cherokee domain and these pioneers had to negotiate for settlements. In 1775, Richard Henderson, a judge and land speculator, and some other investors reached an agreement to purchase a vast tract of Cherokee lands west, and, uh, west of the southern and central Appalachian Mountains through the acceptance of the Treaty of Sycamore Shoals, with most leading Cherokee chieftains then controlling uh, these lands. This would be known as the Transylvania Colony, also referred to as the Transylvania Purchase, which was a short-lived extra-legal uh, colony, technically. Clarksville was designated as a town to be settled in part by soldiers from the disbanded Continental Army that served under General George Washington during the American Revolutionary War. At the end of the war, the federal government lacked sufficient funds to repay the soldiers, so the legislature of North Carolina in 1790 designated the lands to the west of the state line as federal lands that could be used in a sort of land-grant program. Since the area of Clarksville had been surveyed and, and, and also been settled and sectioned into plots, it was identified as a territory deemed ready for further settlement. The land was available to be settled by the families of eligible soldiers as repayment of service to their country. On January 16, 1784, John Armstrong 
filed notice with the legislature of North Carolina to create the town of Clarksville, named after General George Rogers Clark. By the start of the 19th century, Clarksville's population was growing rapidly. In 1808, the Leaf Chronicle, a very much well-known uh, newspaper in Clarksville, Tennessee, was founded even though it appeared as a weekly newspaper under various names as early as 1808 and eventually as the Clarksville Chronicle. The current name is the result of a subsequent merger that happened in 1890 with the Tobacco Leaf, named for the area's predominant agricultural crop. In 1820, steamboats began to navigate the Cumberland, bringing hardware, coffee, sugar, fabric, and glass. The city exported flour, tobacco, cotton, and corn to ports such as New Orleans and Pittsburgh along the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. Now, by the start of the Civil War in 1861, the combined population of the city and the county was 20,000. Planters in the area depended on enslaved African Americans as workers in the labor-intensive tobacco industry, one of the major commodity crops. Both Clarksville and Montgomery County uh, voted unanimously for the state to secede and join the Confederate States of America. Confederate General Albert Sidney Johnston uh, set up a, defense, a defensive line around Clarksville expecting a land attack. Fort Defiance was constructed by the Confederates, which overlooked the Cumberland River and Red River, and was occupied by both Confederate and Union soldiers during the war. The Union sent troops and gunboats down the Cumberland River, and in 1862 captured Fort Donelson and Fort Henry. On February 17, 1862, the USS Cairo, along with another Union ironclad, came to Clarksville and its troops captured the city. There were no Confederate soldiers to contend with because they had left prior to the arrival of the ships. Uh, white flags were flown over Fort Defiance. The city would go on to be recaptured by Confederates to only fall back to the Union and so on and so forth, as this would go back and forth like I stated during the duration of the war. But for the rest of the war, the Union mostly hold, held on to the city while fighting uh, skirmishes in the county with Confederate guerrillas. Many slaves who had been freed or escaped gathered in Clarksville and joined the Union Army lines. These freed slaves and their families would be set up in camps and also would live in shanties along the Cumberland River. The Union Army enlisted freedmen, uh, freed black men in all black regiments, in some cases putting them to work in building extensive defenses. After the Civil War, Clarksville continued to grow in population and was flourishing under Reconstruction. But it suffered a major setback when it experienced a major, major fire known as the Great Fire of 1878. The fire destroyed 15 acres of downtown Clarksville's business district, including the courthouse and many other historic buildings. Afterwards, though, the city rebuilt and recovered and continued to uh, grow into the 20th century. The development and culture of Clarksville has had an ongoing interdependence between the citizens of Clarksville and the military. Like I stated previously, the city's formation is associated with the end of the American Revolutionary War, with many soldiers being repaid with land, uh, with property, uh, and, and part of the land-grant program. During the Civil War, much of the male population was depleted due to the Union Army's victories at Fort Henry and Fort Donelson. Many Clarksville uh, men were interned at Union Prisoner of War or POW camps during the war. Later, as World War I raged in Europe, many locals volunteered to go, again reaffirming what Tennessee has been called as the Volunteer State. Many others had volunteered during the War of 1812, and others during the Mexican-American War, Civil War, and so on and so forth. That's why Tennessee has been called the Volunteer State. With the entry of the United States into World War II, defense investments were made into the area. In 1942, construction started on Camp Campbell, which is now known as Fort Campbell, the Army base which is 10 miles northwest of the city. 
Fort Campbell has been important in the development of Clarksville as the influx of military uh, personnel and just the presence of the base has been a benefit to the local economy as we see it as an important aspect of why Clarksville has been booming and why it has been so relevant for such a long time. In 1927, Austin P. Normal School was founded, which would later develop into the Austin P. State University. The university was named after the then sitting governor, Austin P. Now, there is a unique athlete that Clarksville is proud to boast about, and that is Wilma Rudolph. Wilma Rudolph was an American sprinter who became a world record holding Olympic champion and international sports icon in track and field following her successes in 1956 and the 1960 Olympic Games. Rudolph uh, competed in the 200 meter dash and won a bronze medal in the 4x100 meter relay at the 1956 Summer Olympics at Melbourne, Australia. She also won three gold medals in the 100 and 200 meter individual events and the 4x100 meter relay at the 1960 Summer Olympics in Rome, Italy. Rudolph was acclaimed as the fastest woman in the world in the 1960s and became the first American woman to win three gold medals in a single Olympic game. Rudolph has been very much a cherished athlete who grew up in Clarksville, Tennessee. She overcame many illnesses growing up, including polio, and went on to becoming a beloved sprinter. I remember we actually had a statue near downtown on the river walk of her, but I am not sure if it's still there anymore as it might have been moved to another location or basically just taken down. We also have a boulevard named after her, Wilma Rudolph Boulevard, and I believe several other streets are named after her as well. And now she is the most kind of prominent person that Clarksville again loves to talk about but there are also you know other notable individuals that that have come from Clarksville the two most notable ones that I know of who I'm familiar with are who lived in Clarksville that I know of again was Clarence Saunders the founder of Piggly Wiggly and one of the greatest guitarists and musicians ever Jimi Hendrix who I believe was stationed at Fort Campbell for a period of time Besides um, these notable individuals, there have been other significant events, especially natural disasters, that happened in Clarksville, Tennessee. One of them I remembered well. Besides the Great Fire of 1878, the two most known ones is the tornado that hit in January of 1999 and the 2010 flood. On the morning of January 22, 1999, the downtown area of Clarksville was absolutely devastated by an F3 tornado, damaging many buildings, including the county courthouse. The tornado, 880 yards wide, continued on a 4.3 mile long path that took it north to St. Bethlehem. No one was seriously injured or killed in the destruction, thankfully and fortunately. Clarksville has since recovered from the disaster and has rebuilt much of the uh, damage uh, upon the buildings. Where one building on Franklin Street once stood has been basically replaced with a large, beautiful mural of the historic buildings of Clarksville on the side, and it still has been remained there. It's an absolutely beautiful mural, and I highly recommend anyone who's visiting to check it out. The other di- disaster that happened that I actually remembered uh, because of uh, because the fact that I actually saw the flooding was the 2010 flood. On Sunday, May 2nd, 2010, Clarksville and a majority of central Tennessee, to include Nashville and 22 counties in total, suffered expansive and devastating floods near the levels of the Great Flood of 1937. Many businesses 
along Riverside Drive along the Cumberland River were completely lost. And there were actually many bi businesses that did not have flood insurance to cover the damages that uh, were caused by the flooding because they had never expected such a devastating flood to actually occur at that time. I mean, I remember going downtown and just seeing how it was completely covered with water and it was difficult just to access the downtown area because it, basically you were cut off you know trying to go uh go even to the courthouse downtown so it was kind of a kind of a wild event to actually have witnessed seeing that um other than that clarksville is currently one of the fastest growing large cities in tennessee i think it's beating out murfreesboro tennessee as one of the fastest uh, money magazine in 2019 named clarksville as one of the best cities to live in tennessee now, I'll just close out this video with saying I hope that you guys got some unique information about me talking about Clarksville, Tennessee, as I love just learning more about the history of my hometown and just learning about history in general. And I hope you got something out of it, just learning from what I'm saying and kind of ranting and, and, and going on. I think that the interesting aspects about Clarksville is that the kind of disasters that we have experienced in the past from floods to the fires to the tornadoes that have come through and how we kind of overcame those kind of disasters and also the fact that the thing that I'm thankful for is that the, the 1999 devastating uh, tornado didn't kill anyone even though how absolutely destructive it was in the downtown area it was kind of amazing to me so Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you want to add some more history or have any sort of historical facts that you want to talk about. Please leave a comment in the comment section down below because I would love to learn more and hear more from you guys. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. And like always, have a wonderful day.